Today is literally the last day that I can make a video response on YouTube. So I'm making a video response. This video is a response to Mikola's video about YouTube's decision to get rid of video responses. Mikola, I'm a longtime viewer, first time responder. You might call me a Mikola maniac. So Mikola, at the end of your video, you raise the question of whether a YouTube video is part of a larger conversation or just a miniature TV show. Now, I have to say, nothing inspires me to make vlogs more than watching vlogs. Just like the thing that inspires me the most to write is reading. The Trouble with Poetry, Billy Collins, my favorite poet, writes, The trouble with poetry is that it encourages the writing of more poetry. When I see someone talking about something they're really interested in, it inspires me to pick up my camera and add my own thoughts. But for the longest time, I was guilty, and I still really am guilty of this, of watching YouTube like TV, of being inspired by a video, and then doing nothing, just clicking on the next one. For the longest time, I was really frustrated with myself about this. I thought I was just being lazy. And then eventually I realized that my problem wasn't laziness, it was anxiety. Charlie's video, I'm Scared, and the conversation that YouTube had around that video really helped me articulate what my fear of creating was. For Charlie, his biggest fear was that maybe you, the viewer, won't like it, the finished product. My biggest fear, though, is that maybe I won't like it. That I'll make a video that I'm not proud of. That my video won't add value to the conversation that's already happening on YouTube. That my words won't come out perfectly like the magnificent idea I had in my head. Deciding to create, to respond, to put your own voice out there is the hard option. It's the scary option. And I realized in the past few weeks that YouTube doesn't have an incentive to get you to choose that harder option. Dan Brown mentioned this in his very pragmatic video on the subject. Basically, when people don't respond and just take the easy way out and click on the next video, YouTube makes more money. You see more ads that way. The thing that bothered me most about YouTube's written decision to kill off video responses was the language they used. The part where they distinguished creators from fans. I think a lot of people who've already talked about this have made the argument pretty effectively that fans can be creators too. I think the bigger problem I had with this language is that the best creators are fans. I'll give you a good example of this. In English class this past year, we read a poem by John Keats. John Keats, one of the best romantic poets. The poem was called on first looking into Chapman's Homer. Basically, the whole poem is him fanboying about some British guy's translation of Homer's epics. And I think the thing that makes the poem really engaging is that you hear the poet's excitement. You hear his awe from 200 years away. Now, maybe I'm being optimistic here, even grandly optimistic. I think that there's something more valuable and more powerful than money in more people adding their voices to the conversation, in more people choosing that hard option, choosing the scary option, and responding to what inspires them, sharing their thoughts, opinions, sharing themselves, and creating. And that's really the main reason why I've decided to start making YouTube videos again. Today's shirt. In the spirit of creativity, a pen accompanied by the word mighty. I got this shirt at a writer's workshop that I did at Kenyon College. See you tomorrow.